Hello guys, remember me? I'm Orbiter, your Welsh engineer, and welcome back to Kerbal Quest, part 23, throwing Kerbals out of the universe, or throwing out the Kerbals I put in the text, so yeah, I'll, lick, I'll stick with that. <laughs> anyway, welcome back guys, you can see in this craft we have Billy, and Gresgors, and what are we going to do with them? Well, these are two Kerbals who asked to be flung out of the solar system or out into the universe so that is what we're gonna do I put a ridiculous amount of Delta V on this rocket and as you can see on the last stage we got single command pods because they don't want they didn't ask to go out together they will go out in their own separate ways because I put slight angles on them and you can see they're already heading out of the solar system so yes let's get into comments anyway as we do thrusting these out the universe. Well, first one is Stefan de Gast. Greetings from the Netherlands. And sorry, I couldn't publicly respond to your post on YouTube for some reason. It was saying come out with an error. So, uh, yeah. So, greetings from South Wales and beyond. <laughs> As with slinging up kerbals out of the universe. So, anyway. Next comment from Rebel Commando 616. Plays KSP while watching Orbiter. Let's just not do what he did. <laughs> yes, that was the last episode when I sent those arms off to the Sun Space Station and oh balls. We didn't We did have RCS on the craft, so that means we couldn't do the docking of the uh, modules onto the space station. Anyway, this is another space station. This space station is gonna go all the way to Lathe. And so let's set them up. Who have we got on here anyway? I've put Kerbals on this one. We've got Starfleet 2360. He wanted to be commander on the base or one of the bases or something. We've got Destructoid, Kenks, Heavy Metal, and Razim. Yes, they're off on their way towards Jewel, where they will make a space station around Lathe, which is the one of the moons which I really want to spend a bit more time with. I'm not going to be spending too much time with it this episode, other than building a base or a space station around there. But I do want to get further and perhaps build a mining base or something. Or perhaps a holiday camp. I don't know, because it's a breathable atmosphere. We have to send a space plane. Anyway, let's get another go of the Sun Space Station armed, because that's what we messed up on last day. And this doesn't go complete without any hiccups, so yeah, keep an eye on what I do wrong in this one. Anyway, from Anais Gimmer, almost first, in fact you were third. <laughs> yeah, I like how people always put, I'm first, and then they go on, <laughs> or they'll say, I wish I was first, or I wasn't first, but I was almost first. <laughs> yeah, anyway, welcome. Anyway, from Tajin De Jong. Yes, I am the first one to play Kerbal Roll Down the Hill. Yes, if you watched the last episode, I invented a new game, or it's going to be an Olympic sport. It is going to be one of the top sports ever. And that's when the Kerbal jumps down the hill. Obviously, pick a hill which you're not going to roll to his death to. But the idea is you'll run, jump, and roll as far as you can downhill before your Kerbal dies. Anyway, let's get this lathe base in orbit. For first off, we have to reduce its orbit around Jewel. And to do that, I use one of the moons to gravity break it. Just how happens the best moon for this particular mission was lathes <laughs> to get it down towards. Our well, what you're doing is you're reducing the orbit around Jewel so it takes less energy to get this into orbit around lathe. Otherwise, it would take a ridiculous amount of delta V. And I have had rockets which didn't just have enough and they just pass the moon when they ran out of fuel so yes it's always best to be on the safe side reduce the orbit as best you can and then attempt your rendezvous anyway from I wouldn't know I wouldn't even know sorry that, that's his username that's not his comment that's the username can you send me on a rocket towards the Sun another one I think one of the other Kerbals on the Sun Space Station wanted to go into orbit, um, into, yeah, flying into the Sun, that's it. 
and I have to do that, I suppose. Yeah, no problem, your Kerbal will be in training, because it's quite hot. I'll give you some oven gloves. Anyway, from Michael Tarantolo. Oh, before we get to you, come on, look at this, yes. I didn't think of this. It's bloody jammed between the modules. So a little jiggle. Yes, you have to force it out. Brute force and ignorance. That is the philosophy of an engineer. <laughs> anyway, from Michael Tarano. Taraltolo. You're finally back. It's been a whole day. It's actually been a longer than a whole day, I think. Thought I wouldn't make it. And he goes on. Oh god, the meme thing was cringy though. <laughs> yes, I know. What is a meme? I still don't know. This actually seems a bit complex for me. <laughs> well, not really. I suppose it's just something stupid. You say something... I don't know. I'm just thinking. You say something it means something else. Is that a meme? No, it can't be a meme. Anyway, let's get these things docked while we read out. Zino Gaming 38 By the way, I am Dino 38 Gaming. Th Dino Boy 38 Gaming. Just a new name. I was thought you looked familiar. I thought Zino Gaming? Who's that? I know a guy who knows it's called Dino Gaming, but not Zino. But yes, yeah, glad that I <laughs> that you straightened that out for me. And yes, I did realise it was you after a little while. I think you were on the live stream and that's where I got confused. Anyway, from Jay Young. Hi. Hello, Jay Young. How are you? <laughs> from Jake McLaren. Can I go to Elu? I think you're on a mission. I'm not sure where you were. You are on a mission somewhere. I'll have to sort something out. In fact, we have not got any Kerbals on Elu. That is one of the planets we have to sort out. Whoa, and it's going out of control there and almost hitting the space station there. That was because we had one of the mech jib units set to point at a certain direction. And then when we docked, everything got confused. So, yeah, you have to remember that when you're docking stuff. Anyway, let's orientate the space station, make it a bit easier for docking. As we read out, Dr. Bones Gaming. Thanks, Orbiter. I like swimming and going for long walks. He says, he says we're at walks. <laughs> I think he means walks. <laughs> so, yeah. And now I'm back home on Eve. <laughs> it sounds like a dating site thing, the way you you said that. I like swimming and going for long walks. <laughs> and you put yourself on a dating site. Now the Kerbals will come across and say, yeah, that that's a match. You can go with that Kerbal. <laughs> But yeah, glad you like being on Eve. And I didn't know it was your home. You should have told me. I could have sent you there earlier. Alright, from Spellmaster45. Hey, so I just installed KSI. And for some reason, it won't let me link fuel lines from one part to another. Do you think you could possibly show me how? It was actually easy. Um... Okay, so yeah, he's replied to this comment. I told him that you had you have to install Kerbal inv Inventory System and Kerbal Attachment System. Oh yeah, the space station looks wobbly, it looks cool. And the Kerbal's inside there. <laughs> but he said he's downloaded Kerbal Attachment System and he still can't. It's actually quite easy, except you need to use the uh, fuel pipe which is part of the Kerbal Attachment System, or Kerbal Inventory System. I'll have to show you on a live stream or something, but not in this video. Anyway, from Spellmaster... Oh, he's, spell, he's put another comment on here from Spellmaster45. Dude, the other day, I was trying to do a rescue mission in science mode. So when I landed the rescue pod, anyway, away, I had to literally walk them 19 kilometers, like 14 kilometers of it was RCS, then I spent 10 minutes walking the rest. In fact, yes, that is only only great by with this game. If for some reason you're doing a rescue mission, you land as close as you can, and because you're inexperienced or uh, because you're a numpty and you didn't put enough fuel, you have to land a bit further away. <laughs> And it takes ages to walk your Kerbal across. Sometimes I cheat, use hyper edit. That's just because sometimes you don't have the time to do it. 
but that's the only times which I use hyper edit normally. Other than I'm setting a base up that, you know, a Kerbal has to discover or something. But yeah, that is mad thing about this game. Anyway, the space station is complete! We can wobble it about, Lathe. I think I'm about to add some struts to that. Anyway, let's go to this orbital scene which makes it look cool as it's orbiting the planet. It's a shame that in fast forward mode you can't have the couple of module perhaps pointing down to the surface or pointing up to make it look cool. Anyway, back to the Sun space station. And a couple of problems arise here. You'll see. Firstly, we didn't have the decoupler, it didn't work, so we had the decoupler. But I added an extra decoupler, so that wasn't a problem. Next thing is we do a fast forward. And luckily we decoupled that decoupler because the thing exploded during time acceleration. <laughs> and we almost hit the space station with that debris. Whoops. <laughs> luckily it zooms out of is out of the way. And then this is the problem. I decided to use magnets. However, the magnets don't attach part and it does what the attach parts don't become a part of the rocket. So then you can't use the docking port to as a tire or control from here, which is what I was gonna do. That was my plan. So let's go to plan B. Which is can you guess it? We have docking ports on the modules. So let's use the docking ports. And this will, well, will show you. There's something I forgot here. Anyway, this time we brought RCS tanks. Yay, that means we can dock. Awesome stuff. That's why I'm an engineer. <laughs> Best way to learn, though, is always the hard way, which is to fail and to try again. Yes, even the experts fail at this stuff. And I don't mean NASA, no, they've got multiple people. I don't have anyone to look over to my designs to say, Hey, aren't you missing RCS tanks? Oh my gosh, thank you for pointing that out. I was about to launch that. But anyway, let's get back to this. This time I put a docking port in the front, which makes things docking easy. And I'm using automatic docking mecha because some of the things are going to be hard. Because basically, we're going to dock to that area. We're going to take over to the space station, swap the docking ports over, and dock one part. No, we're going to dock it then to the space station, and dock one part. Decouple, uh, attach it to another docking port, and then dock the final part. So it'll be an arm strutting out with the modules going sideways at the end. And that's why there's a docking port on the side. Complex enough? I hope so, because that was the plan. <laughs> Anyway, let's get into another comment from Starfleet2360. The double dot and three is a meow face, <laughs> as I'd like to call it. And that worries on about, in a, one of the comments of the last video, someone put a double dot and a three, which looks like, uh, well, two eyes and a cat face, as he said. So he calls it a meow face. Yeah, fair enough. I can see that. <laughs> I didn't know what it was, and I'm not sure what it would come up as an emote on a mobile phone or something. So yeah. Anyway, let's get this a bit closer. And you may notice the video's a bit shorter. That means because I didn't have much time. And a few mess ups means that, uh, yeah, things get messed up and I don't have much time as I'm trying to launch another launcher. Yeah, there seems to be quite a few extra mess-ups in the space program. Perhaps we need a new administrator and fire the current one, whoever that guy is. Can't be me, I'm an engineer, I just build the rockets. I do as I'm told. You think all this is me? It is. I'm just trying to... Bab... Blame someone else, I suppose. Jeb? Or someone else? Or perhaps we can blame the last comment I got on this, which if my pad would work, here we are, from Joseph M. No, I forgot the RCS fuel tanks. 
That takes tons of time to do. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> yeah, the laughing is in the comments. So, yes, yeah, stop laughing. <laughs> I forgot the RCS tank, so yeah, that was in the last episode. I put some snarky text up saying, no, I forgot the RCS tanks. <laughs> I thought it would be funny. I had extra time to edit that video at that time. So, yeah, I didn't this time. Are you laughing now? Well, you will be laughing because... Okay, we've docked this. Yay, awesome! We've got another arm on there. Let's decouple this. And... Oh, no! Can you see the problem? It's not attached to the docking port now. That's the problem. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we have no more extra docking ports on this one. Now, I'd wish I kept the other probe close by with the magnets. I may have been able to use that one to attach the final docking port to this using both the craft. Oh, no, this is bad. I did think about burning curls on there to push it around, but no. Anyway from the last ones, and I forgot to start recording on this last staging. The two intrepid Kerbals who are going to go. Here's Billy. Screw you, Billy! Guess who that's from. <laughs> anyway, Billy wanted to go out the solar system, so yes, he's on his way. And I think a thrusted... Yeah, a thrusted retrograde. I didn't check the direction. That means we've slowed ourselves away from the sun, but it, we're ridiculously far away. Look at that. 29,000 million miles away from the sun. And I'm trying to get view through the cockpit because that's all we've got to see through. And there, look at it. The sun. Kerbal. Kerbin's over there somewhere. And also, it took me ages to find another craft. If you're that far out from the solar system in Kerbal Space Pro, it is really difficult to try to find other craft nearby. And yeah, because we went out of range of this one, before the fuel, before it finished burning, it still had some fuel to burn when I loaded into the craft, which was mad. Anyway, who have we got in here? Grez... 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 <laughs> Sorry, I'm butchering names, but that is the Kerbal who asked me to add him. And out of the solar system, he is going. I think he asked me to send him out into the universe. I think it was Billy who wanted to out of the solar system. Both technically, technically the same. I don't think I can send anybody out of the universe. That's going to take a ridiculous amount of Delta V because you've got the entire universe gravity to overcome. How do you do that? That's mad. Is there an edge to the universe? These are questions that these two Kerbals are going to answer. Not in the next episode, in a couple million episodes, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, guys, I will be live streaming on Sunday as usual, so keep an eye out for that. I think it'll be around 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time I'd be streaming. No, wait, is it Eastern? No. Greenwich Mean Time, not Eastern Standard. What is it? I always get confused with Greenwich Mean Time and Eastern Standard Time. Are they both the same or what? Anyway, guys, this is the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed. We will now leave Billy and Gresgars to fly out of the universe to somewhere beyond. And I will leave you here. To discover what is out there. Anyway, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. And if you want me to read your comment out in the next episode, leave a comment below.